Welcome back to Barbecue with Greg. Let's put that meat on the grill. Let's get started. Hello there, barbecue friends. Today, I got this great big pork blade roast. And I got it at my local butcher, and I could see it was all tied up. And my first thought is, I gotta make a great pulled pork out of this. But I wanna do something a little bit different this time. I'm gonna cook it here on the Napoleon Grill's kettle grill. But what I'm gonna do, I wanna set up the rotisserie. The thing I like about pulled pork is those nice tender pieces with those crispy bits on the outside. And I'm hoping this rotisserie will get crispy bits right around that roast. We're gonna take this cook step by step and we'll adapt as we go. I'll show you how I'm gonna set this up. Let's get this started. Okay, yeah, my larger grill here. And remove the lid. I got an offset split basket here. Okay, I got my only fires rotisserie attachment here. I'm gonna set up my instant fire fire starter on my small grill under my chimney starter here. This is gonna be a fairly long cook. So every time I add new charcoal to here, I want fully lit charcoal so I don't get any dirty smoke. So we'll let this light up. Let's get our meat ready. Just see the size of this roast, nice big blade roast, all tied up. It just screaming, put me on a rotisserie. Okay, we're gonna put some dry seasoning on here. Gonna start off with a little SPG from Barbecue Pit Boys. Sprinkle that around. There, now I got some all-purpose seasoning. This is TBQ all-purpose seasoning, but you can use any barbecue you rub that you like. Now, it's a big piece of meat, so don't worry about over-seasoning. Okay, we're gonna do the backside. All right, here we have it. Now we're gonna put this on the spit. Push that through, push that through, try to get it right in the center. Okay. And there we have it, ready for the grill. I'm also going to insert my wireless meat thermometer in here. There we go. Alright, I got my charcoal here nicely lit. Let's put it in our basket here. Now put our roast in there. Like that. Okay, we'll put our lid on. We're just gonna leave this crack just a little bit here. So we'll come back probably every hour or so. Just have a look, see where we're at with the cook and decide what to do depending on what we see. We're just over an hour on this cook. I started another charcoal chimney just to get some nice clean charcoal to add if we need to. So let's open this up and check it out. The smell on here is just amazing. Boy, that's just coming out beautiful there. You can see how much charcoal we burn there. Not that much still got a lot in this chamber here what I'm gonna do is add some water in there so we're both gonna steam it and hit it with the charcoal so we get the crust and lots of humidity in there so let's add that now I'll take the barbecue chimney and uh, 
We'll dump that in there. There we are. Throw our lid back on. After one hour of cooking, I'm uh, very pleased with how the progress is coming. I got that nice crust. We're maintaining some nice humidity in there with the water in the chamber. It's just smelling amazing. Of course, that's our only indicator right now. So again, we'll check back in another hour. We gotta bring that temperature right up past 200 on this, so just keep an eye on it throughout the day. So, we'll see you then. Okay, we are two and a half hours into this cook. We got an interior temperature of 145 on our roast right now. I think we're gonna do one more charcoal dump in here, a little more water to the tray, and that should finish off the rest of the cook. So let's open it up, take a look. We'll add our water and our charcoal. Wow, I'm just loving the smell coming from this. It is looking beautiful. I'm getting that nice crust like what I wanted. Okay, I'm gonna add some more water to our charcoal tray here. I do gotta say, you gotta add this really slow because you are adding water to a very hot tray. There, we'll add the rest of our charcoal here. Put our lid back on. My meter is suggesting I have another two hours to this cook. So I should have plenty of charcoal to finish. Like I said earlier, we'll let this go till we get a temperature of over 200 and then we'll do the next step. I'll see you then. All right, we're now four hours into this cook. I got an interior temperature of 177 degrees. We're gonna have to put a little more heat on this to get us to the finish line. So I'll start another chimney here. And so we'll open this up, see what we got. Add some more coals. This is looking just amazing here. I love the crust we got for them in there. So I got a lot in my charcoal basket here, I think. I'm going to dump a little bit on the opposite side of this roast. And we'll put the rest in the basket. Put our lid back on. There, hopefully that last bit of coals that we put on takes us to our final temperature. So we'll see you then. Okay, we are at the four and a half hour mark. We reached an interior temperature of 203 degrees. It's ready for this to come off. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna put it in a tray, cover it, and I'm gonna put it in the oven at the lowest setting at 170 degrees for about a half hour and just let that rest in there before we shred it up. So let's open this up. We'll take a last look here before we take it off. Oh wow, this is just looking amazing here. Love it, this just worked out perfect. Typically I would wrap this for the second half of the cook, but being on the rotisserie, it just basted it in its own juices. Just a beautiful way to cook it. There may have been more fire management because it's on the kettle and on the rotisserie, but in the end, this is really gonna pay off. Okay, I'm gonna take this in, cover with foil, put it in the oven, and then I'll see you when we shred it apart. So I put this in the oven at 170 degrees for about an hour. Then we shut the oven off and let it sit for another hour. And here's what we got. Then we just had to cut and remove the strings, put it in the bowl, and these bear claws just made a nice job of just shredding this apart.
Letting the meat rest like this just allows the roast to be nice and tender, maintain all the moisture and all that flavor, and make it easy to shred. Here you can see all the little crispy bits throughout. Just a beautiful way to do this. All right, here we have it. Got our pulled pork, got some nice barbecue sauce on here, some homemade coleslaw here on a bun. It's time for the taste test. All right, so we're four and a half hour cook on here. Then it rested in the oven at 170 degrees for about one hour. Then we shut the oven off and it rested again for about another hour. Then we shredded it apart. I'm telling you, just turned out beautiful. And I gotta admit, I tasted some of those crispy bits in there. They're just phenomenal. Now we gotta try the whole sandwich here. Mmm. Boy, this was a great way to get that pork roast up to temperature. We maintained the humidity, the tenderness of the meat, but we also got the crispiness right around. This could be my new go-to whenever I make pulled pork. Break out the rotisserie. Why not? So, again, if you enjoyed this cook, I appreciate you. Smash that like button. You want to see more of these cooks? Click that subscribe. We'll see you next time on Barbecue with Greg. Thanks for watching Barbecue with Greg. One of those barbecue cooking shows people watch on YouTube sometimes.